Hi guys, welcome to the Deciding Factor podcast. I'm John, and with me today is Barb. She is going to be filling in for Alton, who, as you know, has lacked romance in <laughs> some of our other shows. <laughs> so he's trying to be more, more romantic, and he is with his lovely wife for their anniversary. And we just realized that they are actually on 25 years of dating but they have yet to tell us how many years they are on their anniversary. So it's like their 25 their year date anniversary. Yes. First date anniversary. Yeah. Yes. I think that's all hyphenated. Yeah. Yeah. So as you'll see, this show is actually going to be about how do I know if I need a mentor? And I really think we're all going to miss out on the fact that Alton's not here to give his opinion at the end of the show, because I really wanted him to give his input on this. What do you think? I think you've just set our listeners up to be disappointed. And I feel sort of weird about that. Like, no, I think it's going to be a great show, but just like Alton, you all can give us your opinions afterwards on social media. We can have Alton post his opinion afterwards. Yes. So Alton, if you're watching this, you we want to know post. what you think. <laughs> as well as you, the listener, make sure you subscribe to our channel because there are many things that you might miss out if you don't. Also, make sure you follow us on social media because we keep the conversation going there and maybe sometimes too long. I think we overdo <laughs> it sometimes, especially when one Barb time. gets involved. If it's you want time. more reaction, make fun of Barb in the comments and she will absolutely respond to you and may take it a little step further too. So make I sure like y'all stay tuned. <laughs> it tastes just like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, sit tight. This is the deciding factor. Everyday life issues broken down to help you build your own opinions on the issues that matter most. Coming to you from Austin, Texas, this is The Deciding Factor with your host, Alton Hill and John Herzog. All right, guys, we're back. So before we ask that big question there at the end, which is how do I know if I need a mentor? I think, Barb, you're going to have to intro our guest today. Today, we have Lisa Pizik with us. She is a business strategist, a number one international Amazon bestselling author, which I can attest to, that's hard to do, a Thrive Global author, a worldwide speaker, and an RN who takes your business online with excellence. Her strategies and systems help customers connect and become clients fast. Lisa, her husband, Eric, and their team specialize in done-for-you services with branding, content creation, funnels, and websites with their agency, Infinite Design House. They also offer SEO, blogs, social media, and lead generation with their sales booster program. They do all the things you don't want to do or don't know how to do in an online space. When I read this for the first time, I thought, why did I not hire her a year ago when my... <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Thank you so much. Hey, Lisa. How's it going? Hello. I'm so excited to be here. I'm amazing. How are you guys doing? Oh, yes, you man. are amazing. My, my coffee is worn out, so I'm going to try to stay very active <laughs> because Alton's not here to force me to drink something. So, are you sure it's coffee in the cup? He's gonna see. Come on, don't you want to show the listeners the cup that you've got? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm done drinking for the hour. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the hour. Okay. So when when I read the your bio, and of course Barb just going through it. The biggest thing that comes to my mind is, holy crap, you do way too much, and. <laughs> Just trying to think about some of the marketing that even me and Alton have talked about is just mind boggling. I mean, social media, it's, yeah. it's a crazy world to even try to yes. do a profession out of and just do it recreationally. I like that term recreationally. <laughs> I, I recreationally use social media. Yeah. <laughs> that is what I do. That's funny. <laughs> what platform is your drug of choice? Instagram. Yeah. What is Pretty it? much Instagram. Yeah. I love that. I'm on the green. Mm -hmm. You want some green? <laughs> anyway, okay, I but the best part of this is we don't do it alone. We have a wonderful team that are experts at all those things. 
And all those things are kind of like Lego pieces. So once they fit all together, then you have this beautiful online business and this lovely way that people hear about you, know about you, use your services, tell other people. Um, it's kind of like the all-inclusive vacation. If you've ever been on one of those, God, it feels like forever since we've like been on one of those. Um, but you pay your price and then you're just loved on and taken care of and you don't got to worry about all the little things. So, um, But you still had to learn it in the beginning. We did. Oh, we That's did. a headache. Two. I was a lot of coffee and sleepless nights, <laughs> pre-children, pre-child. YouTube videos. YouTube videos. Um, I learned that when you slam the keys harder, it doesn't make tech work. Which oh, I was, really? It just, it, really? You can, I, hmm. When you curse at the screen, it doesn't really do anything. The spinny wheel of death. Maybe that's why I want F key doesn't work anymore. <laughs> no, if you, if literally, if you hit it harder, it doesn't do what you want. So there was a lot of trial and error and mentorship and learning from people that knew what they were doing and kind of, you know, biting it at bits and pieces. But yeah, my husband has 30 years in the industry and um, I've got about a decade in. So it wasn't something we learned overnight for sure. Yeah, but how did you know to, I mean, when you started out, did you know that you needed a mentor? I mean, can you define that for us? Like as yeah. we're talking mentorship today, how do you define what a mentor is mm -hmm. in life and business? I'm kind of curious how you got where you're yeah. at. Yeah. So there's different levels of mentorship and of course there's the, you know, big brothers, big sisters. There's a charitable kind of mentorship that you see, um, or just out of the goodness of your heart. If you want to be a mentor to someone, um, that, you know, is struggling. I had, when I was a nurse, I had a, a woman reach out that she couldn't pass her boards. It was like a, a nurse's daughter that said, will you help my daughter? Like she's so beside herself. You know, you're such a good teacher. Um, we'll pay you. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like I know that pain. I know that feeling like I will just you know have her come over I will you know teach her I'll help her and she ended up passing her board like she failed them like twice and then she called me and then she passed it like after and then she actually called me back and said um how do I get a job now like now that I <laughs> like oh like now it's real like now what do I do right so that was me being a mentor to her you know could I have charged and taken money for it and all that of course I could have but that was kind of like a heart connection where I was like no I just want to see this woman succeed and I, I was in your shoes as a young 20 year old, like I know what that's like. Um, so there's that like free mentorship that you can give or free mentorship that you can find. But then when you get into like the life coaching and the business coaching, a lot of that is paid mentorship. And many of them are governed by good ones will have a certification program. They've had some schooling. They have some proof uh, that they do because that they know what they're doing because you know, you see the jokes about like, I ate healthy for the weekend and now I'm on Monday morning. I'm a life coach. Like <laughs> it's such a loose, you know, mentor can be such a loose word that people can claim they know what you need and they know how to get there. But just because it worked for them doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So really a mentor is someone who helps you, who guides you, who has been in your shoes or has taken the path that you want to take. So they've been there. So I, I've got to stop you right there. So this kind of blows my mind because in the past, I've only thought of mentors as people that are going to help you because they've been in that field or, you know, they specialize in what you need. The problem I have is the fact that you say there's people out there that are pay, being paid to do it. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it seems like one of those things you get taught in church, you know, be kind to one another and, and help them when in need. So yeah. to me, it's like automatically mentorships. I, I think of it's just free. You're, you're doing it for the good of others. Yeah, Maybe that's why you haven't had a lot of mentors, John. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole business. It's a whole business model um, and can be quite fulfilling when you get in with that right kind of partnership or that right and you get in with that right mentor. But I guess you're, um, you know, you're paying them for their time, their expertise, their knowledge. Um, but then, of course, there is that free mentorship. Um, so so so, so sorry. Can I ask a piggyback question off of what um, yeah. John was saying? Because yeah. I, I have had um, 
I have had the free mentorship experiences and I've had some really good ones. Um, and I had one paid coach, which I won't. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I realized the entire time, like when you, when I'm getting these encouraging messages from them, like, you know, team Barbara, I'm like, I think you're only saying that cause I'm paying you. I don't actually think that you mean it. You know what I mean? It's like, like if the doctor that you go to, like your gynecologist is really friendly with you. But if I go see you in the grocery store, we're not going to say hi. Right. Like I can't tell if it's, I feel like I know, you know this if, person. if it's a real relationship or if it's a, like, if you actually have rapport, if you're paying them. You shouldn't really like, like you like your mentor, but you might necessarily not want to invite them over for dinner. Or you might not necessarily want to call them a friend because if you're looking for mentorship to grow something or get better at something, whether that's your business, that's your health, that's parenting, that's whatever it is, they need to kind of challenge you. Like they need to call you out in a loving way on the habits and the things that you can't see that you're doing the way we all have ways that we self-sabotage ourselves in our business and our life and the choices that we make. And a mentor, a mentor kind of sees all the things that you're not. Mm. And a mentor will go, you're acting like this, but that's not really you. This is what I see in you. This is what I know is possible for you. And then they help you break down those steps. If you have a mentor that goes, oh, I know you had a really bad day. It's okay. You know, or you got like, you're like crying. And then they're like, you got this, like, keep going. And you're not actually having a dialogue. Like you're afraid to really tell them what is going on in your life. Then that's not, neither wins in that situation. So your mentor should challenge you. Your mentor should um, make you think different. Great mentors make you think different and challenge you to think different. What, what about time frames, though? So, like, let, let's say we go down the free path. Yeah. Uh, I think we kind of chatted it off, <laughs> off screen. Free. Say what? John's big fan of the free path. <laughs> you know, so what? <laughs> it's Nothing wrong with it. Return on investments very high. Um, <laughs> no, but let, let's go down the free path. Yeah. If, if I were to find a mentor, yeah. how do I know that it's going to be either short or long-term or is it normally always short? I think it's so dependent on what you're trying to change and what the goal is. And maybe goal is the wrong word, but the outcome is because we reach goals all the time. We're like, tick, 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 done, 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 did that. Great. But if those tick marks aren't moving you, you're like, hey, I want to be a better husband. Hey, I want to be a better dad. Hey, I want to grow my business. I want to be a better boss. I want to be a better leader. Those necessarily tick marks might get you there, but what's the outcome that you want to see? And sometimes it's not a quick, it's not a quick outcome because life happens. So I think you have to know why does the mentor want to help you? Like, do they truly like, are they going to cut it off and be like, well, I'm only going to give you six weeks of my time. And you're like, well, I want to be a better dad. Well, you might not master that in six weeks. Right. So I think it's a lot of conversations have to happen and trust needs to be built. You're not just going to open up and tell someone all about your life, you know, the first time that you meet them or that you see them. So I think mentorship is long-term and I think a mentor grows with you as you grow and you become different and you change whatever it is that you're trying to change. Like Eric and I, we have a vision. Um, Our, our like master vision is my husband, Eric is to um, have a lot of land, like big lot of land on, on like lake house or ocean house, our home. And then we want to have like a barn, like a a renovated barn, like an entrepreneurial like school. And then we want to have a rescue farm. I want to save all the animals in the whole world. But the, and then we're like, oh, the entrepreneurial school, they're going to have to go shovel crap as part of the school. <laughs> the farm and the school are going to be one thing. But we're like, you know what? We want to mentor uh, kids that, that didn't come from anything and don't know, you know, they're smart and they, they have drive, but they don't maybe have the right parents or they don't have the right circumstance or they didn't come from a great neighborhood or maybe they, you know, maybe they flunked out of school. Um, kids that just weren't set up for success. 
we want to mentor them and teach them about business and teach them about being an entrepreneur and teach them how to be creative. And I don't want to charge for that. That's just a give back that I want to do because I want to see more goodness in the world. So I don't, I wouldn't really put a time limit on that. Mm -hmm. It's like, come and be a part of the school and you know, I'll teach you and guide you and however long that takes, it takes. So I would say when you're choosing a mentor, don't pick one that has a hard end deadline because then what happened, you don't ever want to feel like you've opened up when you started making changes and now you're like, cut off. Yeah. Then what? And then you're left floundering trying to figure it out. So you basically want to keep them paying you to shovel the crap out of the barn. Like, <laughs> keep I love the idea. I'm just saying it's brilliant. There is a life lesson in that. There is a life lesson you. in that. Totally. So you being the expert here, how about you tell us what are these signs that tell us we need one now? Mm -hmm. Or is there a wrong time to have a mentor? That's what I was going to ask. Is there yes a time where it's no. like, yeah, you're not ready? Yes. So when you ego, you have to let go of your ego in the process. So if you're one of those people that's like, I'm going to keep doing it my way. I'm going to keep doing this thing, but you're exhausted. You're burnt out. Like something in your life is off kilter. So I always say it's an and also not an either or meaning that let's say you have a million dollars in the, in your bank account. You're, you're well, whatever that, whatever wealth is to you, you're wealthy. You've hit your wealthy beyond measure part but you're lonely, you're overweight, you have no friends, like everybody hates you, like you've got money in the bank, but your life is a mess. <laughs> John's looking like it's and a little like, close to home here. I'm like, ooh. Yeah. Right? Or you, let's say you've got this rocking body and you're like in the best shape of your life, but you're broke. <laughs> you know? Like, then things, things aren't, things aren't in flow. I don't like the word balance because I don't feel like anything is ever balanced in life, but Thank I feel you. like there's a rhythm and there's a flow that we go through mm -hmm. and you don't want to have one area of your life where you're massively succeeding and then everything else is falling apart because that never feels good. That might look good on the outside, but that doesn't feel real good on the inside. And you know what that feels like. You're, you're irritated with your family. You're short with your children. You're snapping at your husband. Your bank account isn't where you want it to be. Maybe you're overweight. You're unhealthy. Like you're just not feeling good. You're not feeling, you're not living and you're not feeling the way you're supposed to feel. You're, you say a lot of, well, I have to, I have to go to work. I have to work this job. I have to do this because... You don't, we, we get to, we don't have to we get to. So if you're constantly saying, oh, I have to, and the world is against me and these, this is my scenario. That's the first step that you need help. You need someone to help guide you, but then you have to be open to being coached. Like you have to be open to letting go you know, of these, oh, well, no, I have to have a glass of wine every night because that's the way I cope, right? Or um, I can't ask for a raise because da 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 like all these reasons and excuses that we give, you have to be willing to challenge that and let go of that. So usually it's you feel something doesn't feel right in your life and then you're ready to let go of your ego, your excuses, your reasons why you're still stuck in the space that you are. You're ready to be real, and pull back the curtain and really, you know, it's like, it's like when someone's on a weight loss plan and their nutritionist or their trainer is like, Hmm, you're not losing any weight. Like, are you sure you're working out? Oh yes. Are you sure you're eating healthy? <laughs> oh yes. And you haven't, you haven't had anything like any candy bars or, Oh no. Meanwhile, the rappers are like, you know, coming out of your pant pocket. Like <laughs> you have to be real and honest. Um, you know, Oh yes. I said I would you know, get on and go live on Facebook or tell people about my business. And then you didn't like, you have to be real and honest about what you're doing, and what you're not doing. I like and how you, know, you were, okay. I like how you were really broad on your examples because we've gone from a business talk to a uh, personal uh, wife or husband role. I mean, it sounds like it could be used in many forms and most people only focus on the business aspect. Yeah. And I don't think that you're separate from your business. Now, other people will argue with me on that, but I think, well, I believe like I'm not a different 
person as a business owner that I am as a wife that I am as a mom. The way that I love on you as my client is the way that I love. I mean, maybe I love on my son a little bit more than I love on my <laughs> client, but in the sense of, you know, I am who I am. Like you, what you see is what you get, whether I'm on a podcast, I'm on a stage, I'm in the backyard with my family, I'm at the park with my son. So I don't really feel like there's a separation between, oh, well, I got to put my, you know, business hat on and now I got to be like this. And then I'm going to put my mom hat on and then I'm going to be like this. And then I'm going to put my wife hat on. I'm going to be like this. I feel like when we have that separation, that's where you really don't know who you are because you're mm-hmm. just morphing and trying to be, you know, a certain way. So I think it's, it's, it all, it can span. Really, you want to get with a mentor that helps you in all areas of your life, that doesn't just pigeonhole and focus on one. And that is that same person, you know, that you relate to, that is that way with their family, that way when they're coaching you, um, you know, I've heard it described as the cuffs match the collar, meaning what you see is what you get, no matter when you interact with them. Like, have you ever been Eric and I used to go out for like, we used to have clients that would take us out for dinner when he worked in like agencies in Toronto and these like big wigs would take us out. And I always used to be like, so like, I I just like nervous. Like, I'm like, I don't want to go like, you know, and they would treat the waitresses like garbage. And I would be so mortified. I stopped going. Like, and then my husband was the same. He's like, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna go to, to, to lunch with them. They make me feel really uncomfortable. I thought, wow, if you're treating a waitress like that, how are you treating your employees? How are you treating, you know, I wouldn't do like, maybe that's not mentorship, but I'm like, I wouldn't do business with you if you're treating people like that. Right. So it's like, I don't think there's a set, you know, I'm this way cause I'm the businessman, but I'm going to treat this waitress a separate way. No, no, you are who you are. You know, I think we need to pay attention to that. Um, so yeah, it can be used in all sorts of ways. Okay. So suppose that we have a listener that's, or maybe thousands of listeners that are hearing this and being like, okay, I can find that area, like the area that I perceive tension in my own life, whether it's personal or, or business. But what, to me, what you're describing is a fairly magical person to be able to speak into, um, you know, to be ahead of where you are on the journey, to yep. ha- that you have good rapport with them, all of, to be able to build trust and be going the same direction. How do you find this person? Mm-hmm. So sometimes it takes a few till you, you almost don't know what you like until you get in there and you realize what you don't like. So mm-hmm. I think you trust your gut. You know, you, 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 you search out who are the people in this industry that are doing what I want to be doing. So they're knowledgeable in their area who now for me, having a lifestyle kind of like mine, having a family, having children, understanding, um, you know, the, the rhythm of that, of being a businesswoman, you know, a podcaster and a mom and a wife and a household and all that stuff that we do. So you find someone that understands kind of your unique challenges of life. And then you kind of just get in that interview process with them. What is your process? How much access do I have to you? What do you believe in? As much as they're maybe interviewing you, you're kind of interviewing them about, are are we really a right fit? Like, are you really going to help me? Do you really care about me? Um, You know, do you, are you really going to take me? I mean, you have to ultimately do the work, but what is their vision for you? And then how are they going to help you get there? Are you willing to challenge me? Are you going to call me on my stuff? Um, Or are you going to want to be my best friend and only tell me what I want to hear? You know, what lessons did you learn along the way that they can, you know, that they can teach you? So I think it's really an interview process when it comes to the paid, when it comes to the paid, if you're really down and out, you know, and someone's willing to help you, I would take it. Like if somebody seems to be a, a decent person, um, I would never say no to someone who's offering to help me if it's for free or, you know, wherever that comes from. Okay. But if you're going down the paid mentorship route, I think you have to interview them as much as they interview you. Um, I didn't do a very good job. My very first business mentor, uh, the cuffs did not match the collar. So he was on stage talking about, you know, he was a great salesman. 
He knew all the sales psychology. Like, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, working all these late hours and you're still not getting the clients, you know, that you want, I'm like, yes, check. You know, if you're, if you're crabby with your family because you're burnt out, check, you know, they're like, if you don't know where you're supposed to go in life and you know, you need a plan for that, I'm like, check. They're like, you know, if you're, if you're spinning your wheels and all this time and money and things still aren't working out for you, I'm like, check. Right. But then I got in there. It was a really high investment. And I got in there and I didn't even have access to the guy. I couldn't even ask the guy a question. Wow. So it was like, we're going to sit down and no, have no. this like, chat and I'm going to help you, you know, da, 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 da. And I, I couldn't even ask the guy a question. And then the strategies that I was in a room with people in all different stages of business. So I was more a newbie trying to figure it out. And there were a few of us but there were a lot of people who had been in business 10, 15 years, seven, eight figure earners. And he was gearing all the conversations towards those seven and eight figure earners. Well, you're at a completely different point in your life when you're there than you are at a five figure or six figure or broke and just starting out. I mean, zero <laughs> figure. You're like, you figures, know? like figure eights. Like, is that what we're drawing in this sand where we don't have, okay. But now I'm really curious. So how do you, how do you break up with a mentor if you get into it? <laughs> And I guess I'm thinking more one-on-one. Like, it sounds like that was somewhat of a, uh, almost like a corporation. So maybe you can just yeah. click off. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I, um, the, no commentary on the mentor, cause he's great. Um, but I could tell for a variety of reasons that's like, we're not getting anywhere. But yeah. at that point you have all this trust built. I felt like a heel. Right. And then you have this person that you're accustomed to talking to all the time, even if it hasn't been getting you where you think you're going to go. Um, and then it suddenly just stops. I think I did the breakup wrong. I want to know mm-hmm. in this process, like uh, I think it's part of what's personally daunting to me about the idea of finding a mentor is if yeah. I'm wrong, I don't know how to get out of it. Yeah. I know it's a hard conversation. Burning a, right? a bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it shouldn't burn a bridge. Because it's two people should be able to come to an understanding that, hey, I'm not comfortable. Hey, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Hey, this isn't working for me. So I kind of approach it as um, here was my assumption. So my assumption was you were going to help me do X, Y, and Z. We were going to be able to da 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 whatever you whatever you ex- you wanted to see you know from it. Here was my assumption. And then you kind of say, here's the part that I'm owning in this. Maybe I didn't let you know that I needed X, Y, and Z, or I wanted da, 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 or um, I don't like when people talk to me in this certain way. And that seems to be your style of communication or whatever it is. So you own your part. And then you say, the story I'm making up is... The story I'm making up is, I don't really know if you're enjoying this as much as I'm enjoying this. You know, the story I'm making up is you thought I would have been able to da, 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 da. But the reality is I have four children and that's just not going to, you know, the things you're telling me to do isn't going to work with me. Hey, so can now you tell that to, to John on my behalf, like John, I can't use Google calendar because I have four kids and it's not in me. And I, my, I think the assumptions that you are making about having an intern that can do something <laughs> are incorrect. See, there you go. And what I would like is... She just needs better technology. That's it. (laughs) Her her phone doesn't work for any of it. And her laptop is needing to not be what it is. Mm. But I don't want to hurt a company's feelings. Mm. (laughs) So the assumption he was making, Barb, was that you knew... Yeah, that I was not a loser and would go ahead and pay for a phone that didn't have a cracked screen. I get that. That's, yeah, well... But that's kind of, uh, you know, here's, here, here was my assumption, you know, here's, here's what I'm owning. Here's the part I'm owning. Here's the story I'm telling myself. And then lastly, and then hopefully they'll jump in and be like, yes, here's the part I own. But even if they don't, you've at least not made it about you, 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 you suck. You took my money. You did this. You da, 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 da. It doesn't have to be crazy like that. And then you just say, here's what I would like. You know, I would like to, to, to know, you know, I don't feel we're the best fit for each other. I'd like my money back. You know, is there whatever you would like? Is there someone else? Maybe is there a colleague or a peer of yours that maybe I would be better suited with? Can you recommend somebody to me? This, um, this paid stuff sounds like it's a horrible idea. I've got to say, like, I'm, I'm out. Don't even ask me. Well, see, the mentor I have now is fantastic. But he's the But are you paying him? I'm paying him. He's the fourth one I've had. 
but he's worth every, every penny, every penny. Like I've been able to do so many things in my business, so many things as a mom, so many things as a wife, so many things in my health, um, my mindset. And I don't believe he does it for the money. I believe he, he, he gets compensated for his time, but he gives so much to us. He gives so generously. Um, he really is truly a mentor. Like he really is truly teaching me many things about business and life, but it took me four mentors to get uh, four mentors and a lot of money to get <laughs> there. So, so I want to ask you the important question, which a lot of people at home are thinking is yes. where the heck do I find a mentor, be it free or paid? Mm-hmm. So free, I would, I would tap into your communities that you already know, like, and trust, whether that's a church community, whether that's a school community, whether that's a sport or team community, I would go in the place that's Um, You'd be surprised at how many people are out there and willing to help. You just have to be the one to ask. Um, You know, I was on a, I'm writing a one woman play and um, that's like a whole nother bucket list thing. But I was in this community with 10 women and I said, Hey, does anybody know a playwright? Like I'm really kind of struggling with writing this thing. Do you know anybody that would help me? And there were four out of the 10 women, they knew four playwrights in that little tiny, small group and I wasn't even going to say anything. So I thought, wow, we don't even, we don't know how, who knows who and who is out there. Right. So I would start in those safe communities that you already know, like, and trust, you already feel at home with. Um, that's where I would go with the, um, with the, the not paid type and then, Ooh, the paid type that requires some serious vetting there. Um, cause it's, it's, there's probably more bad than good. Um, and that really takes finding that right person that you, you're asking all, whatever's important to you, whatever's important, you have to find out what's important to you, what you want in a mentor, and then asking those questions of them. And, and knowing, but where, where do, where do you find them? Is it mentor.com um, or? No, you can search out, you know, business coaches, life coaches, um, you know, women executive coaches. So, so if you don't know anyone, if, if you don't have any communities or circles that you can ask, Hey, does anybody have a great business coach? Anybody working with a great life coach? Anybody have an awesome nutritionist? Um, anybody have a mentor that's helped them write their book or lose 20 pounds or be a better mom or get their life, you know, in order, I would ask. And then if, if nobody has any suggestions, I would Google search in your geo, like in your area, like life coaches in, you know, Houston, Texas, or. Well, um, Lisa, I was really hoping I was throwing a softball up there. I was letting you say you could go to the deciding factor and watch some (laughs) of their podcast and get one of those people that have been on the show that you got to hear. (laughs) I thought you were talking about us. I'm like, we would make terrible mentors. No, I'll make what an are you awesome talking mentor. About? I don't now, care what Barb you, says. You do bring up a great point, though. <laughs> In the vetting process, that's what I do when I find out about a person. I, like, go ninja, like Inspector Gadget, like, seeing, like, where have like they spoken. Ninja spoke? or psychotic? <laughs> like, ex-wife psychotic. I go like I go a little psychotic only because I've spent so much money and like I really want to make sure you know I have a little bit of a chip on my shoulder about not making bad financial decisions for people who sell me the dream and it's not really the dream um but it's I search them out like how do they talk and present themselves when they're on a podcast what are they posting on their social media um who are they as a human being to me, it's more important for me. It's more important who you are as a human being than how you do your job. It's more, it's, so that's what I always search out is how have they watched them? How are they interacting with others? How generous are they? Right. Any, I hate. In the I'm very world. generous. You are? <laughs> yes. I'm very <laughs> generous. Okay. <laughs> Except sometimes when he loses bets and then he does have a tendency to be like, what? You can't take Google pay. Oh, well, I just won't pay you. I'm just generous. And then there's like, so much to say. Right? Okay. So what would be your last, like your last pitch to us and the listeners as to, is there anything unsaid that we need to know about that? I feel fairly convinced that you have made 
uh, mentoring sound like something worthwhile? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I would say the last push. I would say if, even if you don't want to tell people that you're not happy or something isn't right, something's off balance in your life, something's out of whack. Don't wait. Right. We want to wait till the right time. We want to wait, wait till the finances are here. We want to wait and that I'll be happy when I'll figure it out when, Oh, I don't want to do this because this is coming up. It's even in the mentors that I've paid and haven't gone the way that I've wanted it to, there was still a lesson in it. I still learned about myself. I still learned about what I don't want to see. I learned about what I do want to see. I believe that even those three mentors that I had before led me to this fourth mentor who's amazing, who's exactly what I need in my life. So it's never lost. So if you're feeling like you need help and you want to have a mentor, go out and find one. Go to your community, ask who's available, ask who's a great person you should chat with. Just start asking questions. And then if you want to go down that paid route, because it's business or it's something more in depth, um, then really, really go and search them out, vet them, you know, really see if they're, it's like dating. Think of it like dating. Think of it like marriage, right? You're going to be spending a lot of time with this person. Um, so really make sure that you get on. Okay. And back to what we were talking about, Barb, don't be afraid that if it's not the right fit, I was so afraid of upsetting them that mm-hmm. I just kept going for years and years and I was paying all this money and spending all this time and just still spinning my wheel. So don't be afraid to, to go after what you need. If it's not the right fit, then you say that. And then you keep moving on until you find someone that really has you, has your back, you know, really cares about you and you can get the result that you want. See, I think I would be the exact opposite. If I'm spending money on someone, yeah, it's easy to pull back and say, I'm done, dude. Uh, but if somebody's giving me free advice, then it's kind of hard for me to say like, uh, I don't think you have a clue what you're talking about. <laughs> Bye. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else I could maybe talk to? Is there any? Who? Where did you get your advice from, or who did you speak to? Or, you know, I, I just started asking like, you know, is there anyone else that I could speak to, please? <laughs> yeah. Although for free, that is a. I mean, that is a fair thing. Like. You could turn and say, you're getting exactly what you paid for, John. Free is a hard, yeah, free is a little bit like if someone's doing it out of the goodness of their heart, then yeah. take what's good, take what's good and disregard. I mean, anything in life, it's take what you need, take what's good and disregard, you know, what isn't. But when you get with the right mentor, some really powerful things can really happen in your life. We're not meant to do life alone. We're not meant to struggle alone. We're not meant to struggle in silence. We're not meant to spin our wheels and be frustrated and not be who we were meant to be. So when you get with that right mentor, things really can change in your life. Nice. Well, Lisa, before you go, why don't you tell us and the rest of the listeners how they can stay in touch with you or maybe even use your services that you offer? Yeah, absolutely. So www.lisapizik, my name, .com is the best place to find me. Instagram, uh, my podcast is The Lisa Pizik Show. Uh, LinkedIn is Lisa Pizik. I think I'm the only Lisa Pizik in the world as of now. So if you search me out, you will find me. But my website's kind of the hub. And um, I do offer mentoring. So that is something that, um, you know, that I'm always out to help people with. Uh, you never, you're never meant to struggle by yourself, so... Good. I, I need some of your free mentorship for social media. <laughs> hey, there you go, right? There you go. I'm always willing to help. But you know, you know when it turns paid a lot of times? When people go, I don't want to do that. <laughs> now, <laughs> See, that's what I'm thinking. Why don't we just hire Lisa? She can just yeah, handle all this. Now and go, then we'll... Okay, well, I'll tell you how to do it for free and you can go do it. But if you're like, mm, I don't want to do that. Okay, then you need to hire me. <laughs> yeah. I'll make sure Barb puts her name on the check and we'll get it to you as quick as we can. There you go. (laughs) It's my book in the process. (laughs) All right, Lisa. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, We'll give our listeners permission to use you as their second favorite podcast, but you know, at least you'll get some money. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much. (laughs) All right. It was fun. You have a good day and we will catch you soon. Also make sure you guys check her out on the deciding factor extras that we ended up doing with her. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. Thanks. See ya. Thank you. Bye. Okay. All right. So, uh, you know, 
I've got to say, like I, I've had a mentor myself on two separate occasions. So my experience thus far was I had somebody at church growing up who owned a business and that's what I wanted to do when I got older. I wanted to start my own business and, and just have something big. And so I would listen to some of the things he would tell me as I grew up. Right. But it wasn't like we label it. He's my mentor. And then as I got older, I actually did some work for him and he trained me more there. Then as I grew, I would just talk about different paths to maybe take, which he got, he guided me down towards uh, the accounting side and then made the turn for HR. Then that was it. I, I didn't use him, didn't feel like I needed a mentor in my life. I probably could have used it for other things, but all I thought, you know, was mentors are for business and that's it. Right. So it was interesting to hear the, the other options that she was throwing out for everyday life issues. But as I got older, I, you know, then I started thinking, man, now I need a true mentor that's in my path, which is HR. So I started looking and I started out on Craigslist is really where I started at. <laughs> was, You're looking for free mentors again, right? Yeah, I was. Well, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think fine. I just, yeah, Craigslist. I mean, I, I think of mentors or coaches and I'm thinking, good God, they're going to want, you know, a thousand dollars a month. And it's like, no, nah, nah, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> Can't do it. So Craigslist was okay, but you did get those people that were like, hey, here's my my fee for mentorship. And like some of the things she had mentioned is that I was kind of skeptical. If I've got to pay you for this, where's your proof that you're going to do what I need you to do? So it just didn't, it never set right. So, you know, paying for mentorships has never been something I've trusted. So I ended up switching off of Craigslist because I didn't have any luck. And I started stalking people on LinkedIn. And that's where I found two individuals that responded to me and were like, yeah, you know, where are you at? Let's see your resume. Let's pick up and figure out where you're at. Uh, one of them ended up dropping out and just not responding later on. I guess it was my bad breath or something. I don't know. But uh, then I had a guy named Richard who ended up sticking with me. And man, I mean, he helped out so much. I mean, his credentials were phenomenal. And that's kind of how I targeted the people I was looking to be mentored by, right? I wanted uh, CEOs. I wanted uh, VP of HR. I wanted these big titles because if they're successful in their career, why couldn't they teach me? So that was the most recent one. And I thought it turned out rather well. Um, it's been hard to take some of his advice but that's why I asked Lisa the question is the, the time frame, because, you know, mine was very short lived. It was like, here's your goals. Here's your path. Boom. That's it. I, I, you know, hey, how's your family doing? Things like that. I, I you know, it'd be uh, more of a friendship than I think at that time. And I don't know that my mentor wants me to stick around that long. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. But that, you know, that's my experience. Have you had any experience with mentors? Yes, I have. Or actually. being a mentor and, yourself. Yeah, well, see, I'm, I'm interested in thinking about the way she described it. I think her view of mentorship is so much bigger, right? Like, or, or maybe more holistic than what you're describing. What she said made sense to me that who you are at home, that's who you're going to be in business. Like, I, I got that. Um no, my first real mentor, I was in high school. It's what got me into jazz piano. And it was a weird, desperate situation. But this guy, he had been, uh, he was the piano player for the Young and the Restless for years. Um, Stevie the Piano Man. And I I would call him every day. And I would be over there taking lessons. I still have stacks and stacks of handwritten notes. But he was the one that taught me how to do business as a musician. Like, how do you work on your own? How do you handle, like, the both the music side, but also the business side of that. Um, but for him, you know, I look back and I'm always kind of curious if you go with a free mentor, like what's he getting out of it? Like, why, why, why would you want to, why would these people that you stalk on LinkedIn have any interest in mentoring? When I think back to that situation, part of what he got was if he made me excellent, 
people wanted to know who taught me, right? It was, there were referrals back. Um, sometimes you're giving each other gigs. There's, there is a sort of a financial aspect. And at some point I got to make his life easier by taking students off of his load. I mean, there, there was something that was mutual about it. And I guess that's the thing that I would be looking for if I was thinking uh, a free mentor is what are we giving each other? You know, what's the benefit? I feel like I will be able to trust the advice that I'm being given more if I understand the motives of the person that is offering me free mentoring. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, growing up in church, I just look back and go, you know, the first person that was my mentor was a guy from church and never did it cross my mind. I needed to give him money or any, or expect anything or him expect whatever. It's just doing a good deed for somebody else, right? You can either work yeah. in a soup kitchen or you can mentor somebody and give them much more. But you're talking about asking for a free mentor. Like if somebody came to you and was like, you know what? I think you have a future it, it business. Was diff- difficult. Right? Like, I think that if you're going to go and ask somebody like, no, I want you out of the goodness of your heart to tell me how to become a millionaire. Um, I think a part of me would be sort of like, but why? And that's where the paid mentoring makes sense to me because I think maybe the assumptions are all above board. Like, you know, you're paying them, they know you're paying them. And so you're the, maybe there's a higher expectation of the service that you're going to get. I don't know. Um, I, I can I don't know. see I mean, both sides. If, if I had somebody approach me and say, John, Hey, um, I want you to teach me how to do HR or handle these certain situations better. I mean, I'm not doing this for, uh, I'm, I'm not being a mentor for a living. So it's like, why can't I just help with some questions that someone has? Okay. But I'm going to follow up with that. Let's suppose somebody comes to you, young, young John comes to you, grown John and is like, I want to be an HR. John, you are my hero. And uh, you have this mentoring relationship for a while, but they don't, what if he doesn't take your advice? What if he doesn't show up for meetings? What if he takes your time? I don't buy that you're not going to feel annoyed. And I wonder if the financial side of it protects that relationship. Like if you have, if your mentee is a, it flakes one week, well, they still paid me for my time. Right. Like, I wonder if there's some, like, if you want it to be a bigger part of your, uh, of your career, I wonder if there's some protection there in paying for the mentor. I don't know. I mean, if, if somebody came to me and I was giving them free advice and free attention, if you miss meetings, yeah, I, but that's going to be like in business, right? You keep missing meetings, I'm going to fire you. If you don't show up to get free advice that you're asking for, yeah, I'm not wasting my time. But I just, unless that's the path that I'm trying to change to, like, hey, I don't want to do podcasts anymore. I want to go teach people how to scratch their backs better. I mean, whatever it may be, uh, that's what I'm going to do. Then I'll charge you. But if you're just asking me, hey, I, I need some advice. Can you help me build a path? To me, that doesn't seem like, hey, I've got to devote so much time to. Oh, that's funny. That sounds like a huge commitment to me. Really? Somebody coming to me being like, yeah, like I need to change my life. And actually, you had asked if I'd ever been a mentor. This did happen once. I did have somebody come to my kitchen. These two like 19, 20, 20 year old boys. They're like, we need to change our lives. Uh-huh. And your husband says that you can help us change our lives. And monthly, it didn't end well, quite frankly, because I think that when you come in asking for something, maybe without being prepared for what is going to change. Like I thought that was probably the most insightful thing that Lisa said was that for mentoring to be successful, uh, the person coming asking for mentorship uh, has to be receptive. You've got to be in a place you can't be hiring or for free asking a mentor um, to to drag you along in the right direction. So I think, I I don't know, I guess uh, I think that you are an optimist, John. I admire your optimism about people. (laughs) I tell you what, I know that Alton has had some mentorship himself, uh, even recently, and I'm going to miss the fact that he's not here to give his opinion on this. 
So which because one of us I wants think... to play Alton and we can give his opinion? Like, what do you think? You can do it. I don't think I can. He's on a whole different level. Got my kombucha. I guess you're going to try it, huh? <laughs> no, I'm not. not really. All right. You always do... find something to get out of it. So, you know, he'd say something positive. Exactly. Whereas I'm just going to be neg- negative the whole time. So we'll see. All right. Let's do this. You ready for it? Yes. All right. Let's do the deciding factor. Now it's time for our deciding factor. <laughs> All right. So the question question of the day how do i know if i need a mentor i want to go back to one of the other shows that we've done because we've asked coaches that we've had on here in the past how am i supposed to really know and i really think it's harder to look at yourself in the mirror and go hey i need a mentor i really think your friends and family are probably going to be your biggest guide So you as an individual, I feel like you should be keeping your eyes open for those friends that need help. Perfect example is Alton, and he's not here to defend himself. So guess what? I'm going to use him as an example. He's had certain issues to grow his business, and he's needed these types of guidance. Well, luckily, having some people on the show has sparked some interest in him. But me as a friend, I've also been kind of hounding him. And you know this too, as, as well as we've talked, Barb. And it's just one of those things. Being there for your friends and family can really help guide this uh, need to have either a coach or a mentor. So that's probably your biggest thing is what I'd said. I did like her, her point, though, that she did make which was if you're struggling in fill in the blank, you could use a mentor. I've struggled with marriage. I've struggled with being a parent. Um, Homeschooling, man, if you're a homeschooler, I bet you could use uh, guidance in many forms. I'm not saying you're horrible, Barb, but (laughs) there are other parents out there. No, because I mean, uh, I, because of the show we had with you, Barb, I've thought about some of our kids being homeschooled, not homeschooled through the school district, but true homeschool. I couldn't have done that without you sparking our interest on the podcast. So I might have to ask you for guidance on how to do homeschooling. So being aware of something you're struggling with or are new at, you could possibly use a mentorship. And I'll leave you with this though. I don't care what Barb says or maybe what Alton says later on in the comments. I do not believe in spending money on a mentorship. That's just me. I think there's so many people out there that could give you guidance in a lot of areas. Now, I'm sure there's certain areas you need to spend money on to guarantee that you're doing it right. But check out LinkedIn. I think you'll find a lot of networking and a lot of mentors that might just help you. I love that you're teaching us how to stalk people. I mean, that's kind of, wow. I didn't think that we were going to have this big disagreement at the end at the deciding factor today it's just the two of us usually there has to be three to have an option c um (laughs) i'm gonna totally disagree if uh if your friends and family are coming along pointing out the weakness in your life probably um there's two things i think that are going to be true in that scenario your friends and family are going to have awkward conversations with you at every holiday and somebody's going to end up with a snapped kneecap <laughs> over it. Like, because people that are, that are, I feel like people that are focused on like, how do I help you? My goodness, John is struggling. Um, I think make the most obnoxious <laughs> friends. And usually it means that I'm missing something in my own life. If I am noticing more about yours. Right. But I also think uh, secondarily that, uh, if you are not seeing the need in your own situation, then you're not going to get much use out of mentoring. I think that there is something self-awareness wise that needs to be in place so that you can benefit from mentoring because she was right. I think she was right that there is a, um, a level of, of being receptive that has to be there 
you're basically putting something that's very personal. I like that she, she brought up um, marriage and weight loss and, you know, these things that are deeply personal, like we have reasons for why we are the way we are. We have reasons for the habits that we got into. If you're going to go to someone and ask them to help you change your life, I think that you need to have gotten there on your own. Now, can you use friends? If you've seen this on your own, like if, if I see that I'm apparently a horrible homeschooling parent, could I go to John and be like, am I wrong in this? Like, do I need some, yeah, I think you can get feedback from your friends. Um, but I think if it doesn't start with you, it's, it's already, it's dead before you get anywhere. And I think with that, I thought she made a compelling argument for paying for a mentor. I've only done it once, but I can comfortably say that I would do it again. Um, if I found, if I, if I got to that place where I perceived the need, like, here's the thing, I can see the thing that is the weak link in my life. Right. Um, I think that, uh, I think especially in that situation, a paid mentor, you're basically saying, I don't want to wander the entire grocery store in the hopes that someday I stumble upon Cheetos. Instead, I'm going to the Cheeto factory. Like that's well, how I view mentoring. So, so the reason I say uh, a lot of people don't look at themselves and catch themselves and say, Hey, a mentor is what I need because I want to take you back to like working at McDonald's as a kid and everything. When you're growing up, some of these kids that work their, you know, their dreams and goals don't align. You know, they they don't know how to get where they want to be. And sometimes they need encouragement or direction. And so I think of that as even the, a slight mentorship. So depending on your, you know, it could it could be your education, you know maybe you don't ever go to college and now you're trying to figure out what to do with your life. Who's going to mentor you? Or do you even really think about it? Cause I knew when I was working at McDonald's, I wasn't thinking about anyone really guiding me. That's the thing though. I still feel like, yeah, can it ever be done? Well, I think it probably can, but it's sort of like leaping into a pit full of snakes. Mm -hmm. Do people ever make it out alive? Sure. Probably it doesn't mean it's a good idea to jump into a pit full of snakes. I think generally speaking, you get bit and that's sort of how I feel about like, if you want to come alongside and befriend a younger person and, and give them, you know, like show them that something else is possible. Great. But I think as soon as you come in looking for the weakness in someone else, looking for where they lack vision, it's automatic that your attention is on them and you're looking for flaws in them and not in yourself. I think it just sets you up for blind spots. Whereas I think if you are someone that is actively looking at your own blind spots, that attracts the attention of someone that would not have otherwise thought that things could change. Sure. If you suddenly, you know, skyrocket in your career and you've went and purchased a mansion, someone is going to ask you what happened. Yeah. Right. And I, and I think that's true. Anyway, that's my take. Nice. Well, this was uh, interesting to not have Alton here again, but like we said in the intro, Alton is out actually trying to be romantic on his 25th anniversary. So once again, congrats to them. And uh, we definitely missed you. We, we would have loved to have known your output on this or intake. Which one is it? Input, I think. Oh, well, we can do that one. Best out of three, yeah. Best out of three. <laughs> All righty. Well, thanks for joining us on this deciding factor. I think it's uh, something that you should possibly share with your friends. So make sure you click the subscribe button and share everything that you see from us. Even if you don't like it, just share it. They'll love yeah, it not, anyways. Not possibly. Just do it. Just follow instructions <laughs> for pizza. All right, guys. We'll catch you next time on the deciding factor. Barb, say bye. Bye. This has been another episode of The Deciding Factor. Giving you food for thought on real life issues. Be sure to click, like, and subscribe to this podcast. As well as all your big social media outlets, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Don't forget to check out our website at thedecidingfactorpodcast.com and give us comments and feedback. Until next time, stay safe and remember to keep an open mind.